Hey guys, Harrison here, and today we're making hydrazine, which is shown right here. Now, hydrazine is one of my all-time favorite molecules just because everything you can do with it. So let's go ahead and make some of it. Well, before we make some, let me tell you a little bit more about hydrazine. So hydrazine is used in a lot of things. It's used in blowing agents for polymer foams, but it's also used in things like rocket fuels, has a lot of really cool uses in organic synthesis, which in some future videos I will do um, some things using hydrazine. And also you can make a lot of energetic materials using hydrazine. And well, as you can see by the molecule here, it has a single nitrogen nitrogen bond, which makes it very energetic. So let's go ahead and make some of this. And I'm going to be doing this all just from over the counter chemicals that you can buy at any hardware store. Not that I recommend doing this because hydrazine is very toxic. And today we're making it in a solution of about 64%, which is concentrated hydrazine. Now it is in a solution of water, which makes it a lot more safe than the anhydrous version because the anhydrous version um, tends to explode when it's anhydrous. So let's go ahead and synthesize some of this as a quick side note i don't know if you see all these fucking mosquitoes that are just absolutely trying to eat me alive and they somehow get under my fucking pants and bite my legs so yeah in a future video expect me to be making ddt because i'm going to kill every single one of these bastards inside this lab i swear to god mosquitoes are the most annoying annoying things ever so first to a thousand milliliter beaker, I'm gonna add 355 milliliters of 10% sodium hypochlorite solution. And I'm going to let it cool into zero degrees Celsius. So here I have 34.1 grams of urea. And I'm gonna go ahead and dissolve this in the minimum amount of distilled water. Now it's very important to use distilled water because metal ions in our reaction can destroy our hydrazine. And here I also have 0 0.5 grams of gelatin and I'm also going to go ahead and dissolve this in the minimum amount of distilled water. The point of the gelatin is to help chelate metal ions in the solution because metal ions will decompose our hydrazine. So this gelatin will improve our overall yield. Okay, now that our gelatin and urea solutions are completely dissolved, we can go ahead and add them together. Okay, so our bleach solution has now cooled down to zero degrees C, and it's time to add 47.8 grams of sodium hydroxide. So as you can see, I went ahead and dissolved this in some water already, and I put it in the fridge to cool. And the only reason I did this was to help prevent hot spots forming when we add this solution to our bleach. So it's still also very crucial to apply good stirring while slowly adding the sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, now that our solution has cooled back down, we can go ahead and add our urea gelatin solution. Okay, so now we have hydrazine forming in our solution, and as you can see, this step is accompanied by a lot of foam. Okay, so now we have to heat the reactions, drive it forward. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a stir bar in, turn the heat up to max, and turn on strong stirring. Now when the solution goes clear, we will have our final hydrazine product. Uh, I forgot to mention, it's also best to cover your beaker so you don't have your hydrazine escape. As you can see, the bubbles being formed is CO2 being released from the decomposition of our intermediate. So what exactly is going on in this reaction? So here we have our molecule of urea. And as you can see, our urea contains these two amine groups and these two amine groups are going to then turn into our hydrazine in the very end of this reaction. So what we're doing here is we're oxidizing our urea using bleach, sodium hypochlorite. And this is going to undergo a Hoffman rearrangement to produce this isocyanate intermediate. And this isocyanate intermediate is then going to go ahead and react with water to form the carboxylic acid. And as you might know, carboxylic acids are what's known as decarboxylated under heat. And that is when we remove a CO2 molecule from our carboxylic acid. So in this case, when we remove CO2 from our molecule, we are then left with hydrazine. And the CO2 will go ahead in solution and react with the sodium hydroxide to form sodium carbonate. And um, from our bleach before, because some of the mechanisms inside the Hoffman rearrangement, that will form sodium chloride. And so we're left with hydrazine, sodium chloride, and sodium carbonate, as you can see in this overall reaction right here. Now you can see our solution has pretty much gone clear. Now it's time to turn our hydrazine into hydrazine sulfate. Now the reason for this is, is because distilling the hydrazine directly from the mixture has a lot of issues. Because there's a lot of salt in there, it tends to thump and it doesn't really work too good. 
So first we're gonna turn it into hydrazine sulfate and crash it from the solution. Before we turn it into hydrazine sulfate, as you remember, we produced a lot of sodium carbonate. So we first have to neutralize the sodium carbonate using 122 milliliters of HCl. HCl is also at 31% concentration. So now I'm gonna add 40 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid and this will form our hydrazine sulfate. Okay, as you can see, we have fully neutralized the solution and that white precipitate you're starting to see is our hydrazine sulfate, which is perfect. And since our hydrazine sulfate solubility drops quite rapidly with decreasing temperature, we're gonna go ahead and place this in the fridge. Well, if it fits, oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to end up taking that thermometer out. But yeah, so we're gonna let this sit in the fridge until it reaches zero C to drop our hydrazine sulfate out of solution. Okay, now that our hydrogen sulfate solution has cooled overnight, as you can see, most of our hydrogen sulfate has precipitated. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do a vacuum filtration. Okay, so our final yield after drying comes out to 48.3 grams. Now this is kind of a little bit suspicious because this reaction um, should only produce probably about 41 grams um, and that would be at about 60% yield. So we're looking at probably about 70% yield here, which is very suspicious for this reaction because you are very lucky to get 60%. Uh, that would be about the max. So either one, we're just really good or two, there is maybe some extra water weight and that's all I could think that would be about in here. A little bit suspicious there. I don't know where that extra weight's coming from. Again, might just because we're that good at chemistry. <laughs> but I highly doubt that hypothesis. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do some processes on this to convert this to our concentrated hydrazine hydrate. Okay, so here I have a simple reflux setup. I know ignore that the water is going the wrong way. It's, um, I just need more hoses. But anyway, so to our reflux setup, we're first going to add 106 grams of our hydrazine sulfate. Next, we have to add 77 grams of our sodium hydroxide. So now here I have 50 milliliters of water and again I added 0.5 grams of gelatin just to help keep our hydrazine from decomposing. I'm gonna add it to our reflux in 10 milliliter portions. Okay, now that this has been refluxing for a couple hours, it's time to set this up for a simple distillation. Okay, so now we're going to do a simple distillation of our hydrazine mixture. And down here on the vacuum inlet, I also have a solution of bleach and that is to neutralize any excess hydrazine. So I'm gonna go ahead and distill this and I'll come back to you guys when that's done. Okay, so our first distillation is done, and here's our hydrazine solution. And as you can see, it's a very oily-like liquid, and from my calculations, this should be around 35 to 40 percent hydrazine by weight. But in our next step, we're going to concentrate this up to about 65 percent. So we're going to double the concentration of it. Now to concentrate this even further, I'm going to perform another distillation. But instead, I'm going to add 175 milliliters of xylene to it. And this will help dehydrate our hydrazine solution that we have now. So we'll coat it still with the xylene. I will now replace our first flask with our new one. Okay, so we are now going to distill this mixture. I'm first going to distill over 250 milliliters of water slash xylene. And then when we distill the rest of our hydrazine, it should be extremely concentrated. Here's uh, the waste solution of xylene and slight hydrazine solution and I'm putting bleach into it and as you can see the reaction between the bleach and the hydrazine it's very very vigorous and gets extremely hot so here we go here's our final yield we have about 20 milliliters of extremely concentrated hydrazine this stuff is probably hovering around 65 percent from my calculations and let me tell you we're gonna have some fun with it here's what I've always wanted to do Add concentrated hydrazine to fuming nitric acid. And as you can see, it is angry. Oh. 
Oh, yep, it is angry, all right. Let's give this another go. And as you can see, that reaction is very exothermic. Holy crap, this thing I can't even touch with my gloves. So as you can see, that's why this mixture is used as rocket fuel. Hope you guys enjoyed. That wraps it up for today's video. Thank God it's over just because how hot and humid it is out here. And it's been a two day project and wearing all the protective gear um, is not fun out in the Florida heat and humidity. So <sighs> thank God that part's over, but it was really fun making the concentrated hydrazine. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time with some videos of using our hydrazine that we made to create some really cool compounds. So bye.